Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Random Heathen Ramblings podcast, where we discuss all sorts of things Germanic heathenry related. My name is Jesse. I am your host. Let's get into it. Well, 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 hello, everyone. Hello and welcome. Welcome back to this channel. Welcome back to this podcast. Season four, ladies and gentlemen. Season four. Um, episode one of 2023. Quite a wild thing to think about, man, that um, I've been keeping this podcast running. You guys have been listening, watching. I've had some awesome guests, some friends. Made some new friends because of this podcast. Um, had some really awesome thought-provoking, thought-stimulating conversations here on this podcast. And uh, here we are for yet another season to do it again. Uh, thank you so much for tuning in today. You'll notice that the uh, the layout looks a little bit... Well, not the, really the layout, but the... I don't know. The transition, of course, the intro, the video quality might be uh, a little bit different. Hopefully the audio doesn't really change too much for you, but I'm trying out something different um, for, uh, you know, for this episode and maybe trying something new with the technologies for future episodes. And uh, yeah, so here we are. You'll notice that there's not a whole lot of frills, bells, and whistles at the beginning. I want to just get right to the meat and potatoes of things and try to get you guys into the frame of mind of listening and learning with me and creating hopefully conversations of yourselves with your people. Um, But I would just like to drop a little housekeeping information for you in the Linktree link and in the show notes of this podcast, like everyone else before it, uh, there is a Linktree link. That is your one-stop shop to find everything related to Midgard Musings as a brand, as a whole. uh, And it's a great way for you to support this podcast. So be sure to click on that Linktree link, follow me on all my socials, Subscribe to the channel. Uh, if you want any merchandise, the link is down there in the link tree link as well. It's a spring store. Uh, it's got some pretty cool shirts, hoodies, sweatpants, and other accoutrements. Um, I would like to start thinking about creating new merchandise uh, here in 2023. Uh, so as I have time and as I'm able to update the Midgard Musing store over there on spring, I will be sure to uh, remind you guys about it because... It's there, and I would love for everybody to uh, sport you some some nice threads. I, I own a couple of pieces from, well, actually, I own one piece of uh, my own merchandise. I don't own a couple, uh, but several other people here um, that have supported me over the years have have gone out and bought themselves some things there. And uh, from what I've heard, and from what I can say of myself, it is good quality, uh, well made, screen printed um, items. So uh, definitely check that out. You can also. Um, donate to the channel if you so choose. You can call in to the Midgard Musings hotline and be featured on this podcast. I will play audio of your voicemail if you want to do that. That number is 615-671-9832. Um, it is open all the time. You'll just call in, leave a voicemail, and you can say hi. You can drop a you know message of support. You can tell me you know let us know your thoughts about a particular topic or subject that you would like to see covered um, on the Random Heathen Ramblings podcast, and I will be glad to screen it and uh, make sure that it is suitable for all of our audience and and listening pleasures. And uh, yeah, make sure that uh, you know nothing crazy is coming through the airwaves or the podcast waves. Um, but yeah, hopefully this uh, 2023 has started off for you guys out there all across Smithgard and abroad to be a, uh, a very good, um, you know, peaceful, health-filled year. Um, I am just coming off of the, uh, the high, the mental high, I guess you want to, if you want to call it as such, but I'm, you know, riding the coattails of the festivities of Yol, which my tribe, Hurizi folk, had uh, celebrated just this past weekend on the weekend of the um, Yule Moon Month or the Yolamanuther or Yolamanuther, Yolamanuther, 
I guess is the, the right pronunciation. Anybody that knows how to pronounce it correctly, go ahead and let me know down in the comments. Uh, or you can write it, but I think it's Yule Monitor. Um, but anyway, the Yule month, right? The Yule moon. Uh, the full moon was on January 6th, which was the first night of historical heathen Yule. Um, and it goes for three nights. So our tribal celebration of Yule was on Saturday the 7th. Um, and this was a particularly fun and exciting Yule because we, for the first time, oathed in a new member and took oaths of uh, positions of leadership ourselves. So for all of you folks here that are maybe wondering what the hell I'm talking about, what in Odin's gray beard, what in Thor's red beard, what in Seif's golden hair am I talking about? Oathing in someone and all this taking oaths and blah, blah, blah. That is what today's podcast episode is about. Um, I have mentioned and actually done some videos before about uh, oaths and how they are more than just a, a promise, right? But you know how content is out here. You got to stay fresh. You got to stay relevant. You got to stay new. You got to stay strong. You got to stay wise. You got to stay heathen, man. You got to stay true. You got to stay together. All I know, all I know is oaths can save the day, all right? And that's all the singing that you're going to get out of me here on this uh, on this podcast, hopefully forever. <laughs> I am not a singer. I am not a musician. So we're just going to keep to the fact that I am a rambler. We are on the Random Heathen Ramblings, not the Random Heathen Singings podcast, right? Um, but anywho, got to throw in some levity, right? Talking about oaths uh, today, uh, specifically the oaths that are sworn during Yule. Um, so as a recap, I was just going to go back a little bit and tell you about um, the way that, you know, uh, my tribe, as I mentioned before, Hlirithi folk, uh, and that is quite literally just Thor's people, um, people of actually Thundering Storm, I think. Hlirithi, uh depending on who you... Uh, cite your sources um, uh, as I remember watching a, a Jackson Crawford video on uh, Hlerity and what that name or what that word means. And I think he gave a um, some sort of information that suggests or, the, or that, uh, you know, supports that it has something to do with a boar or a hog or a pig or something like that. Um, and everything in, uh, that I found has suggested uh, or supported that Hlerithi is a name of Thor. Um, and I believe the Old Norse word for that translates to thundering storm, thunderer, you know. So Hlerithi, as the thunderer, as uh, we are Hlerithi folk of the thunderer's people, people of the thundering storm. And that's what we call ourselves, as people of the thundering storm. Uh, and, and the name of our tribe started uh, because of uh, so many instances where our tribe would, um, you know, host some sort of small, intimate gathering of, of, of ritual, right? We would, uh, and, and we would start it, you know, around, uh, you know, the winter months and the summer months, and we would do different ritual gatherings for different, different things. And, and early on, it was, you know, not really historically based or, or, rooted in any sort of historical sources. But as we've grown, um, we've, we've leaned more towards um, adopting a, a practice that favors historical reckonings, at least when it comes to the holy tides or, or holidays um, of, of ancient Germanic tribes. So, um, so many of, of the things, like, I mean, I'm talking, there would be thunderstorms in the spring slash uh, summer. There would be thunderstorms in the, in the fall and in the winter months uh, and yes, I say winter months, meaning like in January, we've had thunderstorms. And so in this part of the country, in, this, in the Middle Tennessee area um, of, the, of, the, of the southern United States, you know, Thor just kind of comes and goes as he pleases, and it doesn't really matter the time of year or, or the seasons and, and, and all that. So um, his presence has been very active among us. And of course, Thor in the lore and in the mythologies and in the stories has always been uh, recognized as sort of the every man's god, as the, the god of the people, right? The protector of Midgard. So um, not just because 
of that, but because of mainly his his acts of presence among us during ritual purposes, it, it was uh, it was almost a no brainer that we we go with that name. And, it, and instead of saying you know Thor's kindred or Thor's hammer kindred or the mule near people or anything like that, you know, we went a bit old school um, and gave him gave gave us uh, the name of our tribe is 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 a nod to one of Thor's names, which is Hiridi. So anyway. Um, no thunderstorms this year for Yol, but um, you know this this year was our first Yol of um, oathing someone in or or welcoming in a new member to our tribe, um, and that process of welcoming them in uh, included and involved the taking and giving of oaths. Now, some of you that may be new to heathenry or that may just be uh, listening or tuning in, or, or, or when I say taking and giving, right, um, I think a lot of people may, may, may just automatically assume that an oath is something that is taken, you know, you, you, you take an oath or you give an oath, um, you know, take an oath of silence, right, we hear terms like that, take a vow of silence, take an oath of silence or you give your oath to accomplish X, Y, Z, blah, 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 right? That sort of thing. Well, while there is some uh, connection or correlation to that in, in a Germanic pagan, uh, Germanic heathen context, uh, when I say taken, you know, oaths that are taken and oaths that are given, uh, it means that there is more than just one person involved, okay? Now... <clears throat> If you are the type of person to promise to do something, you might use the term, I took an oath, you know, to whatever it is, right? Do whatever it is, say whatever it is, accomplish whatever it is. Um, and if it doesn't involve anyone else, if there are no other people present, um, then in the, in the sense of what I'm speaking of now in, in the Germanic heathen sense, then it is not truly an oath. Because in order for an oath to be uh, an oath, then you need to have the, 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 the one who is taking the oath and the ones who are, or the one who is giving the oath. Um, so the way that, uh, and, and so I'm going to just add a little bit of, of, of in, information as far as, as what I mean by that. Someone who takes an oath, is, is, is swearing an oath of, of something, this, that, or the other, right? So that person is the oath taker. They are taking the oath, i.e., new members of our tribe. They take an oath. Then there is the oath giver, the one or ones who is giving this person their oath and then entering into what we refer to as an oath web, the oath web. Once oaths are exchanged or oaths are given and taken, right? What is what is happening um, from, you know, again, the Norse perspective or the Germanic perspective is things are being tied together. Threads of individual people um, are now being intertwined and, and come together and we are now entering into this this web of, of weird, okay? Weird being this... Uh, something that everybody has, everybody is, has their own individual threads of weird, the, the, the Norns or the Nornir, as an old Norse says that they are, you know, thread the, or weave the threads of, of man and gods alike, right? So every individual person has their own weird to tie. And then once an oath is given and taken between individuals, groups, what have you, now those individual webs are becoming intertwined Right, so the web is becoming bigger. There are there are other things happening, and so it's a pretty monumentous, monumentous, momentous occasion, right? It is it is it is something that is very profound to happen to enter into such a a thing, where multiple lives um, are affected and impacted by this, um, and the reason why, and, and you may see this, and and if you are a, a solitary practitioner, this may seem a bit foreign to you, or you may going you know. That sounds kind of weird, like strange. Um, but if you're a, uh, a a tribal type of heathen or a tribal type of person, or if you are the type of pagan who is interested in um, 
becoming part of a collective, becoming part of a kindred, becoming part of a, a tribe, becoming part of some sort of group or collective of individuals, you may encounter, you may find that that group of people has something similar set um, set up for them. And it's different for every tribe, okay, or it's different for every kindred. Not every kindred would have something like this. This is something specific to us. It's, it is not something foreign in the, uh, the, you know, the minds or the worldviews of many heathens, um, but it may not be something that you see across the board. It is not a universal approach. This is our approach, and I'll tell you why. Um, before anyone is considered or, or, or even, you know, um, yeah, considered to, to be worthy of being a member, and that may sound, again, strange for some people, but when I say worthy, I don't mean like, you know, worthy in the sense of, of what you might think of in modern times. What we're talking about is, is that person, what kind of worth does that person have? And worth, all right, in the, in the Germanic sense and in the, in the Germanic heathen sense, worth is not something that is uh, one of, of, you know, I can't tell you what I am worth to you. You can't tell me what you uh, you are worth to me because we don't know each other. All right, some of you I know. All right, so there's going to be some of you that are listening and watching that are definitely people who have um, proven themselves of great worth to me, and 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 hopefully I, I I can't say this of myself. I can only hope, and I can only, you know, um, you know, uh, yeah, hope and pray that 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 my worth has been established to others. Um, but what I can say of some people is that their worth has been proven. They have proved their worth. And how is worth proven? Worth is proven through deeds, through actions, okay? And the worthing process takes time. You don't meet somebody off the street or out of a Facebook group or off of you know any sort of social media platform. You don't meet somebody and talk to them for days, weeks, months, right? And... You, you can't really establish or, or, or prove anyone's worth in that way. You can become close friends. You can confide in one another. You can develop, uh, at least on the surface, what would appear to be bonds of fellowship, bonds of friendship, bonds of kinship even, okay? Um, and that is 100% true. That has been 100% true for, for even long before social media ever came into into existence. I remember as a kid um, in school and, and and throughout the years and whatever having pen pals. You would um, and <laughs> for the younger generation, you know what the hell is that? Uh, you would basically um, start writing letters to people across miles across countries. Right. Uh, this one time I remember, I was a kid, went to Disney World with my parents. And I was like, you know, again, I was like nine, ten years old, right? And we went to Disney World in, in, in Florida, and we met this lovely family who had kids roughly around my my sister's age from the UK. And I don't even remember the specifics of the circumstances, right? I mean, there's literally thousands of people in this amusement park, and uh, wherever we were, whatever we were doing, we may, may have been standing in line, struck up a conversation, whatever, Ended up having, you know, a brief moment of connectivity with these people and their kid, their daughter, I forget her even her name at this point. Um, we exchanged uh, addresses, you know. Now, now and today, you know, it's always take out your phone. Let me let me add you on Facebook. Let me follow you on Twitter. Let me add you on the on the Instagram. Right, whatever. No man, back in the day it was what's your what's your, not even your email address. We didn't even have the internet. Yeah, it existed, but we didn't. I didn't have email addresses when I was nine, ten years old. You know, what's your address? Write a letter. Every couple of weeks, month, month or two, whatever. We, I'd get a letter. She'd get a letter from me. I'd get a letter from her. Whatever. And we went back and forth, and it didn't last very long. I don't think. I don't. Again, I, I, can't, I can't remember her name. But you know, you would write to each other about things. You would establish a friendship that way, and you could learn a lot of things long distance. So. Now in this modern time, right, we got social media, everything's immediate. You can learn a lot about somebody, you know, in like 15 minutes just by adding them on Facebook or Twitter or Instagram or whatever. You can learn a lot from somebody by scrolling through their socials, 
connecting with them in that way and, and learn a lot, at least on the surface level and somewhat on, on, a, on an inner, you know, on a, on a more inner and deeper level because some people overshare. Some people go crazy with what they put out there on, on their social media. So, yes, you can, you can establish friendships, fellowships, and the appearance of what might be kinship over long distance. I still maintain the fact that bonds of kinship cannot be established unless there is a unless there is time for you to prove their worth and for you to prove your own worth to this person. So all of this, you know, brother, this sister, that la 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 that you see in these pagan communities and all that. I mean, it ain't for me. I don't I don't just flap my jaw to every Tom Dick and Harry out here who wears a Mjolnir or, you know, uh, it, it, you know, venerates the gods and goddesses of, of, of Northern Europe or anything similar to what I do. And I just, oh, hey, brother, hey, this, you know, no. Now, I get a lot of po- folks that, that say this type of thing to me online. I don't take offense to it. I just want people to know that I don't reciprocate in that way unless I have been given the opportunity to be proven to, to that person as brother and that that person has been, that I have, I have, they have proved their worth to me of receiving said title of kinship, brother, sister, whatever. So for any of you that are listening and watching, right, if you are following me on my social media and um, you refer to me as brother, and I don't refer to you as the same or sister or any other sort of kinship title in return, don't take offense uh, because we haven't met each other in that way and we haven't established each other uh, in that degree of closeness. Now, if you do see me reply to somebody's comment and call them brother or sister or whatever, then you should know then the, that person and me have done things worth each other to establish a, a, a degree of, of, of fellowship to be considered kin to one another, okay? Um, so... Anyways, going off on that tangent, coming back to oaths um, and, and the taking of oaths. When clearly the folk, when, when we really started to establish ourselves as a legitimate tribe, as a, as, a, as a collective of people, and right now we're still very small, and I mean very small. I mean, we can count on one hand the amount of people who are clearly folk. We had to... Um, establish our own thu, our own customs, our own laws, as it were. Um, I'll probably do a series or something about what thu is, for those of you that don't know, but it basically means law. It is essentially the the bones of the inner guard. It, it's the bones of the inner hearth. It's, it's the thing that establishes law and order for that tribe, kindred, what have you. So our thu um, should we determined should include a worthing process. We are not just going to meet someone off the street at a park moot, at a public gathering, at a at a happenstance, you know, exchange of how you do's, right? We're not going to just say, all right, well, after that, shake hands. You want to join our group? Yep. Okay. Hey, brother. Hey, sister. You're welcome. In, and that's that. No. Uh, we established as do that we would have a worthing process. Um, and that worthing process has, um, a time period or a period of time to lapse. Um, so without going into specifics, because that would violate what my position in the tribe is, which is to preserve our tribal life. I'm not going to, I'm not going to share details of, of what we do in our tribe to any great degree, anything that would potentially harm the luck of, of, our, of our tribe because I serve as chieftain, okay? That is what the group of people that we have together, what our tribe has collectively deemed appropriate as, as, as my job is, is to be chieftain. And the chieftain's job is, is amongst many things, is, is to be the protector of the luck of the tribe and to make sure that nothing happens that would infringe or, or be damaging to the tribe's luck. Um, so anyway, um, tribal structure, we have one, um, you know, loosely. And one of the things, again, about adding new members is is that after they have proven their worth, 
after said period of time, after said specific things, after it is decided upon by the elder council of the tribe that, yes, this person, we would like to extend them an invitation to be a brother or a sister to, to our tribe, right? At that point, um, that person is going to then swear an oath uh, that ties their luck, ties their weird with, with ours, right? So we, be, we enter again into an oath web. And so the, and the, and the neat thing about, you know, oaths, or at least our oath is that it's, it's not, you, you're, you know, it's not some sort of like, I don't know, uh, dictatorship where, you know, uh, I swear to serve the king and under pain of death, la di da di da you know, it's nothing, it's nothing quite that grave, you know, and, and it's nothing quite that um, serious. And again, I don't, I won't be going into to details, but um, suffice that to say, an oath was sworn um, to collectively for a new member to become part of our tribe. And that person has proven their worth time and again um, since last year since 2022, um, has become a very close friend of our family and, uh, you know, again, displayed great worth to us. So again, worth is placed on someone by the people. Um, and then at the same time, worth was placed upon us by this person, right? So this person would not have felt it comfortable. They wouldn't felt it. They wouldn't have felt right to you know, swear an oath of, of fealty, swear an oath of loyalty um, to do something or, or, or to become part of something that unless they, they felt comfortable with. So the worthing process is a two-way street. You need time to establish and, 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 to, and to make that, you know, connection with somebody, and they need that time to make that connection with you. So again, it's, it's a symbiotic relationship of exchange between parties, between people. That's what makes a tribe strong is what we feel. So um, he's already been, you know, it's already been shared. It's always been shown. I put it out on, on social media, you know. So our our newest member is uh, Josh, who we know as Ulf or the Wolf. Uh, this is a name, this is a title that is not just, you know, for, for funsies, right? This isn't just for, you know, because the, the, the wolf is something important in Norse mythology and, and Odin's wolves and, Wolves of Odin and any of that nonsense. No, this is this 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 was a a name of something that came to him long before that um, through his own personal ordeals. Um, but yeah, so Ulf is our newest member, and our now Gothi. Um, so that's a really that was a really fun and exciting thing um, to happen at our Yule event because again, this was a first for literally folk. This was a first for us. Um, to have the opportunity to welcome in someone who we've become very close with and who has come you know, cl close to us. We've been in each other's homes. We've had many, many meals together. We've done a lot of things um, to establish worth amongst each other, you know, to know that if, if something is needed, we can rely on one another, right? So all of those things, you know, uh, again, create this, this bond that that establishes familial ties. You know, it's again not something that you can just hang out a time or two with somebody and then I think, oh yeah, you guys are pretty cool people, and now you're my brother, and now you're my sister, and all that. Not for us, not for the really folk. It's 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 a worthing process. It's it it takes time, um, and so this this you know again starting twenty twenty three off with um, a new member, a new Gothi. It was really exciting for us, and you know we're looking forward to to seeing what what Ulf can can do to bring more luck to the tribe and 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 do well for the community because you know what the Gothi does and and what the Gothi's position is 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 a leader um, of spiritual matters you know so um, for for those in our community that are that are looking for somebody that they can you know release their, their, their worries or, or unravel their weights upon in, in, in the spiritual realm, right? Uh, the Gothi, you know, I, I feel at least is, is positioned to, to help with that. So we're looking forward to, 
to seeing that take place in, in Ulf's growth as a, as a person and as a goalie um, that we're all a part of now, you know. Um, and there was a, there was a lot of other things too um, that that took place at Yule. But you know, when when oaths are sworn, regardless of when they are sworn, I mean, it, like I mentioned before, it's kind of a grave matter, right? It, it's a it's it's serious business. You don't just nobody should at least enter into an oath web haphazardly or or you know with any sort of um reservation um it should be done with a clear conscience with a with a clear mind and with a you know a very um i don't know uh yeah just a very clear clear mind and a clear head about it um it's different and it's more than than just a promise right and I've, and I've talked about that before, is that oaths are more than just a promise. It's not that you're just promising to be a good boy or a good girl. You're not just promising to do something um, and, 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 you know, I swear on the gods that I will do it. You know, there's consequences to oaths that, have, that, are, that are broken, or at least there should be. There, there, there's recompense that should be paid. There's what we call shield that should be paid. There, there's some sort of, you know, if you fail to uphold your oath, and let's face it, guys and gals, like, let's face it, everybody messes up. There are, there are times when, even in the lore, even in the sagas, I should say, even in some of the, you know, it, the, the, the more than 700 sagas that, that we have available to us, there, it's, it's riddled with stories of a time when, when, you know, someone said they were going to do something and, and, and dropped the ball, failed to do so, couldn't do it, missed it, whatever. Um, it happens. Things happen. You might, you know, set out to achieve something of greatness or, or, or anything. It may not be just the greatest thing ever, but, you know, you may, um, you may, you know, set an oath that you're going to accomplish a, a certain thing. And then when or if you don't, there needs to be something in place to balance the scales out. Because when an oath is given, when an oath is sworn, when an oath is taken, given and taken, sworn, again, everybody involved is, is looped into the, to the mix of things. So when the person who takes the oath accomplishes it, they now can give a boast of it. And they can say, I've done this great thing and I have added to the luck, right? Well, if they can't come back and boast that they've accomplished what they set out to do, then there needs to be recompense. There needs to be a payment. There needs to be shield set. Um, and, you know, that shield is, is, is set by certain other members or, or, or leaders of, of our tribe, right? We have a, started, he started out as, as, as the name law speaker, but is now our Thule. And the Thule's job is, is to kind of set that, that shield, as it were, set the, set the payment, set the recompense. Um, so it, again, it goes, it goes into being more than just, I promise, I, you know, to do something. And, and that's, what's been lost, I think over time is, you know, promises, vows, people, when they swear on something, right. They, it, it's, they maybe get caught up in the moment of feeling the power of what is behind doing something like that. But they, you know, it, if, if there's certain components not in place to set some of the things that I set, said before in motion, um, then, it, then it loses its gusto, right? It, it doesn't carry the same weight as it does because people break their promises all the time. People break vows even, right? They, people exchange vows, wedding vows. I'm, I've been one of them, right? The way you exchange vows between people uh, to, to be loyal, to do this, to do that, right? To be exclusive to that one person and what happens, you know, those vows get broken, and it's detrimental. It it it, it damages things long term for, for 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 a lot of people, you know. And without the the proper measures in place to, you know, bring things back into balance, um, it's 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 just a perpetual turmoil. Um, it there there's nothing there to take place of the ill that was dumped into, into, into the well, right? So 
for for anyone that is is considering after everything that I've just said and, and is pondering the meaning of the oath, right, and what that means. Um, first of all, I would I would I would caution everybody and anybody that is thinking about becoming part of a of a group or becoming part of a of a kindred, a tribe, or or whatever is 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 if the you know process to join is you, you may want to just question and ask you know is 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 there anything here that that I'm required or or expected of to do because for us in 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 our group in our collective you know it is it is we rely on one another that's what the tribe is about that's what a that's what a that's how a tribe survives is that everybody isn't their own island nobody's out here just doing their own thing not giving concern or, or, or care for the others everybody is independently um, industrious and they do they can and they can hand, they can handle their own right they, they they rule their own ships right they, they run their own house sovereignty of hearth is is 100 a component of our uh, tribal too is that everybody's home is 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 sacred and is sovereign to themselves so there's another thing and nobody in in third folk that can tell another member how to run their house or how to run their home uh, but at the same time is is there is you know is there anything that you are becoming a part of is 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 what you're becoming a part of what you want to be a part of right or is everybody just kind of doing their own thing and not giving care and concern to the others um and also knowing that you know swearing an oath in 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 front of or with other people intrinsically ties you in with their life you know so now instead of Ulf being just Ulf by himself Ulf is now Hillary folk and, and and has the protection and has the um the love and the care and the oversight of his tribe now because he's proven himself worthy of that um so you know again I don't tell not not here to tell anybody how to do things or what to do or or that, that they should you know, only join tribes or groups that have a worthing process or that have an oathing process or this or that. All I'm saying is that when you are talking about combining your life with other people, sharing space and time, whether it's ritual or, or any other sort of spiritual or religious um, activity is, is, you know, think about what you're doing. Think about the gravity, the, 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 the severity, the, the, the sovereignty. Think about it all, right? Think about what you're doing. And if these are the type of people that you want to tie your weird with, right? It's why we have the worthing process. It's, okay, well, you want to be a part of a group? Well, we're a group. You want to be a part of us? Well, let's hang out a bit, right? Let's, let's, let's see what it's like to, to hang out with you. Let's have some meals together. Let's go on a hike. Let's do things. Let's part, you know, just participate in activities that build friendships first let's let's get to know each other let's make sure that the life that you're living and the life that i'm living and we're living you know is not going to conflict with the tribes do and the tribes laws and the tribes structure and the tribes growth right because again if if, if what someone is doing is is not conducive to the growth of the tribe then hey you want to be a part of a group but maybe this group's not the one for you the only way to know whether that is the case is to allow time to pass and allow relationships to build uh, organically, you know, um, and then and, and see how it goes. Prove each other's worth. Prove yourselves to one another. It's not, again, it's not just, well, what can you do for me or what can you do for us? It's what can we do for you, right? So again, there's this reciprocation. There's this um, uh, exchange of, of weird exchange of gifts, even, you know, exchange of life, guys, you know, we, we, we share life together anyway. So uh, if you're talking about extending your inner circle to others outside, you know, your kith, the, 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 the people who you want to get to know a bit better and establish familial bonds with, uh, you got to give it time. You got to, you got to test it. It needs to be tested. It needs to be proven. Right. Um, so anyway, there's my little just thing about oaths. Um, the oaths I want to just briefly mention, talking about Yule and, and swearing oaths at at Yule. Right. Um, 
it was said, or it's been said that it, uh, the, the, the oaths sworn at, at, at Yule were of, of a particularly powerful nature or something like that. I'm going to go back and find the source material where it's mentioned. I want to say that it's probably in Heimskringla, Saga of Hawk and the Good or something like that, somewhere around that time frame where you hear about, you know, uh, oaths being sworn on the bristles of boars and, and whatnot. And, but I, I'll, I'll go back and I'll find the actual source material. So it'll be annotated in the description of the video and in the show notes of the podcast. So just check that out when you get time. But uh, yeah, the, the, the oaths sworn at Yule were believed to be of, uh, you know, particularly potent or powerful. So yeah, you can swear oaths anytime, but if you're swearing them at Yule, then you've got all of that extra energy, all that extra power, all that positiveness, <laughs> positivity um, with you and, and at your back as well, right? So you've got that added boost of luck maybe even to, uh, to carry you in that oath um, into the accomplishment. So, you know, there were other oaths that were given and taken um, at our Yule which I will not share here and now uh, because that is none your business, man. Uh, and it's not to be mean. It's not to be rude. It's, it's, it's to, again, maintain and protect the, um, the luck of, of those who have entered into that, to that oath web. Um, but the thing about it is, is that because those oaths were sworn, because those oaths were given and taken, um, actions need to come forth. Deeds need to be done work needs to be put in. So you will see. Um, and those, especially in the Middle Tennessee area, will see the results of those oaths being sworn. Because it has to be. Yeah, there, There's no other way for it to, to be accomplished. There's no other way for those oaths that were given and taken um, to be fulfilled without it being seen. So, um, for those that, uh, for those of you, uh, in the middle Tennessee area and in the surrounding areas, uh, stay tuned just for announcements, things coming out of, of, of the Midgard musings, uh, social media platforms, you know, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, um, and anything else that, that comes through, it'll, it'll definitely be shared through those channels as well, um. Don't forget as well that uh, what I want to do here in 2023 is that if you are a um, heathen, pagan, you know, uh, business, if, you, if you're a business owner, if you have a craft, um, and I'm going to open this again, I, it was kind of hard to condense it into a short form content, but, but, but basically, you know, if you are a pagan business and you don't have to be Norse pagan, okay, or Germanic pagan, if any sort of, uh, if this is the right word, non-traditional religious polytheist, Okay, um, and again, it doesn't have to be Germanic paganism, but if you are a polytheistic business owner and, and you could be a craftsperson, you can have provide a service, um, whatever to, whatever that your service is. Again, it could be I don't know divination, um, music, consulting. Um, I don't really care. Crafting, you know, uh, wood burning, carving, um, blacksmithing, uh, tailoring. I don't know, uh, just anything. I put a call out there uh, for anybody that wants to have an ad here on this podcast. You got up, you know, minimum 30 seconds up to a minute and a half. So 30 to 90 seconds long that you can get on a video, um, deliver your pitch. Think of it like shooting a commercial, right? So I think, you know, a minute is, is most of your real and short form content that are, that are being uh, pushed really hard by the various platforms and their algorithms is, is to engage with short form content, right? So if you think about it, um, this is long form content. This is a podcast. But if you want to get your business out here on the airwaves, on the, on the, on the podcast waves, in front of the thousands of people that collectively I have that, that capture all this stuff, I want to get attention drawn to your business. I would love to get people coming to you for what it is that you do. You can email MidgardMusingsTN at gmail.com with that content, right, with, with whatever it is that you do, that, that, that video, um, just advertising your work. Hi, this is so-and-so. I have XYZ website. You can find me on Facebook, Twitter, 
Instagram, whatever your so socials are, TikTok, I don't care, right? Even content creators um, can send it in as well. Hi, I do this, I do that. Find me here. Look forward to seeing you. Thanks so much. You got 90 seconds to, to share your information. Um, keep in mind that this is a also video and audio format. So if you have content that you're showing, it's going to be seen on Spotify and YouTube, but may not be seen visually on other places. So, you know, provide a call to action. Tell people where they can find you, how they can support you. And I'll feature it here on this podcast. Now, if you don't want that, and you would just rather me read a script and say, hey, guys, um, this, you know, uh, you know, kind of like a commercial break or whatever, you know, while I'm here, you guys be sure to check out, you know, you know, Pagan ABC craftings. They do X, Y, Z, you know, for wood carvings. They do blah, 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 blacksmithing, whatever. Just give me a script. You know, if it takes up 30, 45 seconds, a minute, minute and a half, whatever it does, as long as it's, if you reread it and it's, you know, no longer than a minute and a half long, I will be glad to read it for you if you, for whatever reason, just don't want to get on camera and, and, and do your thing there. I'm happy to do that. Midgard Musings, TN at gmail.com. Send it in and I'll feature it here on this podcast and uh, we'll get some hopefully new business drilling your way. Um, but I did guys, uh, you know, it's, it's the very first episode of 2023. A lot of you are out here looking to make new waves, new starts of things, maybe taking oaths and giving those of what not yourself wanted to bring this out and make sure that you knew what kind of thing that you're doing when you're talking about getting into the swearing of oaths, taking of oaths, giving of oaths. Um, it's big business, you know? Um, so don't enter into those things lightly um, or casually, you know. Make sure that you're uh, thinking things through and, and, and getting all the pieces in order before you, you know, get into that sort of stuff. So for anybody that has questions, um, if we didn't cover it here, you know, because of my ramblings going off on different things, if I didn't quite make it clear to you, comment down below, send me an email, you know, at me at, uh, on my, you know, Twitter account, uh, message me on Facebook, whatever. Just get in touch, ask your questions, um, call in if you want to. Remember, 615-671-9832. Just call in, leave a voicemail. Uh, we'll feature it here, and we'll talk through it together. You know, we'll get those questions answered, and if I don't have the answer, somebody sure will, <laughs> or we'll find it together. Uh, and that's what it's all about. It's all about learning things together, and that's what I want for us here in 2023 is to grow together and to learn together and, and, and to, you know, get some get some good conversations starting. If it's not here, maybe somewhere else. So thank you so much for tuning in today um, to the very first episode of Season 4 of the Random Heathen Ramblings Podcast. If you did like this content, be sure, if you're able to, give it a thumbs up, share it around, comment when you can, engage with the algorithm gods and appease their insatiable appetites. And until we see each other again, thank you so much. Hail, may the gods continue to notice you, and may your ancestors smile upon you. <laughs>